So, I am just pulling up to the airport. And it's a beautiful day, which, um, you know, doesn't happen all that often. And uh, Nate and I are going ski flying. Uh, I've never been ski flying before. So gonna get a bit of a rundown of like what to look for, uh, what to take into consideration before heading out there. Um, it's gonna be an awesome day. My name is Nate Couchman, second generation aviator. My dad flew professionally for 40 years, cut his teeth in the bush in uh, northern Alberta. Then wife and kids got onto the line uh, with a couple of different major carriers and finished out his career doing that. I fly recreationally only. Um, this is my 1960 Pipe and Pacer. Like a lot of them, it was converted from uh, tricycle gear to tail wheel, so it's a 2220. I entered into flying in sort of a non traditional sense. Most folks enter into it because they simply love the idea of flying. Um, I'm a very avid outdoorsman, um, hunting, fishing mostly, and uh, of course, you know, dad flying. We, you know, I enjoyed it, but not to the extent that most folks did, and then watched. Uh, I think it was a flight chops video of him ski flying and I went, oh man, like I could get into some serious, serious lakes ice fishing with that sort of thing. So my goals were based on, on an end goal of uh, being able to have better outdoor experiences. And uh, as a byproduct of all that, I've met some wonderful people in the aviation community and uh, they're all lifelong friends now. What we're gonna do today is just do a quick little rundown on how I approach ski flying. My time is extremely limited relative to most folks out there. I have maybe 600 total hours, of which uh, all have been in this airframe. We start with the walk around, and uh, it's not anything much abnormal from from what a, uh, a typical one would be. The only thing that uh, I pay particularly close attention to is um, obviously there's a fair amount of side loading on the landing gear when when uh, you're doing ski operations. So I'm very uh, particular about the state of the landing gear, particularly the aft cable. Um, we wanna make sure that everything's always in you know, good shape there. Second to that, we, uh, we inspect our bungees and uh, make sure the shock cords are in good shape, they're not fraying or anything. And uh, lastly is your, uh, the redundancy we have is that frost cutter cable on the front should you lose your bungee. And, and it, it happens, I, I've never experienced it, but uh, it happens and uh, you, know, you just deal with it. The aft cable remains, it's, it's slack of course in this configuration. Uh, as soon as we become, we become airborne, the bungee is always is under tension, so it'll, it sort of points the skis in, in a slightly nose up attitude relative to the air, the core of the, the airplane. These cables tighten uh, when that happens, and uh, I'm told that this, this one is the one that you need to always make sure is in primo condition. Uh, because if the ski, if you lose these cables, the ski is going to turn up on it on on its side, and I don't think there's any recovering from that. If nothing else, when we are evacuating the airplane, if we ever need to, those are the two bags you want. You want your medical kit, and you want your winter survival kit. We don't care so much about the engine cover if we're upside down. We don't have to worry about it needing to keep the heat in the airplane. We don't care at that point. So that's basically it. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Our snowshoes, that would be a third, if anything. And uh, snacks. So Lake Ops, again, it's, I, I reference it back to being similar to uh, like hard water float flying. More so with uh, ski flying, the, uh, the lake is very much ever changing. So ice conditions, snow conditions, water in between snow and, and the lake. These are all factors to consider when you're going into a place and whether you feel that it's going to be a suitable landing site. It's just like a lot of off airport operations, you have to exercise good decision making. Typically, uh, when, when I'm going into a lake, most for the most part I've been to them before, but uh, 
if it's perhaps the first, first time visiting that lake for the year. I take particular care, do a high pass, high pass being 200 feet, then uh, <clears throat> inspect, the, inspect the lake. Typically you can see uh, wherever there's creeks coming through or swamps, the ice will tend to be discolored a little bit. And uh, those are areas to watch out for thin ice or more, more overflow than other areas of the lake. So we are just getting ready to go here. Just finished the walk around. Um, gonna have a little powwow before we go, talk about what we're gonna do. And uh, yeah, come along. As you're ready to do your run-up, be prepared to have to do it on the move, right? So, and you're, you know, get, get your, you're ready to bring your RPM in, then all that stuff we normally, will we'll go through, once we're sitting in the airplane, we'll go through that, that run-up process. Big thing is, of course, just make sure it's clear of ice, we'll do a mixture, mixture check, and then check our mags and we're, we're basically ready to go. Remembering we can never stop, right? Yeah. Uh, so before you're about ready to do, do your run-up, a really important item to think about is knowing that there's a good possibility that she's gonna decide she wants to go out onto the runway. You wanna check to make sure there's nobody coming and going. Have a, have a quick boo there. And uh, if, we, if we break away and start going out, I'll get, I'll get your comms. Forget, forget about the comms, just get ready to go. We touched. Oh, did I? Yep. Okay. Just forgetting the flaps. Okay. Yep. I'm having a really hard time knowing when I've touched down. <laughs> well, that's kind of good in a way, really. I was pretty soft. I guess I just should have pushed the nose forward sooner. Yeah, yeah. as soon as, if you could feel, feel for, you'll just ever so slightly notice it. Yeah. But the tail, the back sides of the ski first. As soon as that happens, then you can check forward and hold it there. I guess I could look down too. I have no, just don't so even bother. Just use, look, use like you're always landing the airplane, look way out there. Yeah. Just, you'll be able to feel it. Okay. Hey, you're that fast? Yeah, you're right, sorry. No worries. And, I forgot how to fly there for a second. Jesus. Jesus, Annie. Well, you... To go for these tracks of mine sure. to the right? Sure. Thank you. 
Power, power, power. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Okay, could you feel the, could you feel yeah. the flash? I'm gonna level off a little bit earlier and yeah. keep and, that and speed. Then just, oh, you're using power to arrest your rated. Okay, now you're leveled off and then you throw in, throw in a little bit of power just to arrest. So we just made it to Pentanquishine. Pretty exciting. Um, so much fun. And uh, the snow is a little bit wet in the other lakes, so we didn't uh, stop there. But we're going to have some lunch now. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to turn around here. Sure. Um, and you said right, if I make a left turn, is that usually Yeah, usually, uh, we, you know, with wind conditions being what they are, it doesn't matter a whole lot right now because the wind's on your backside, but you use yaw to your advantage, right? Okay, and also I guess there might be snowmobilers coming behind me, so... Yeah. Well, they're gonna, they're gonna learn all about ski plane operations here in a second. All right, fire it up. Okay. Pick the nose up or tail up, rather. Okay, sit yep. down. Yep. Here it comes. Okay, 75 knots. Yeah, sort of a climbing okay. right hand turn if you need to. That's where there's no terrain, of yeah. course. Yeah, man. That's right. And climbing Beauty. a bit more. I see those three towers to my left, three to my right. Yep. We'll just head straight maybe and that sure. will follow the sure. shoreline. Sure. Oh yeah, I didn't turn this damn thing on yet. Well, you're gonna have to dead reckon us home if we if that's where we're going. Oh my gosh. How will I ever make it back? I don't have any idea. You'll have to figure it out. It looks like some weather to the side, maybe? It might be. I, you know, it, it doesn't look like anything of real yeah. consequence at the moment, but... Yeah. Again, you have, you're, you have the advantage that if you run into weather that you find intolerable that you can't even get out of. Well, I mean, everywhere is a suitable landing site yeah. for you. Yeah. Oh, traffic Golf Road, Delta Golf is good. Well, what do you say we get back to Collingwood and have some more sandwiches? Yeah, man. Okay, so we've landed. We had an awesome day of ski flying. It was not as scary as I thought it would be, and Nate was super awesome at showing me the ropes. And looking forward to doing it again. Yeah, man. Awesome.